Thank you for being here. We need to be together. Thank you to the Stand With Us board. I'd like you to stand up, please. The Stand With Us Midwest board. This is the best board in the history of boards. That's not an opinion, it's a fact. I want, there's so many people to thank. First, I want to thank my husband, Ron. I don't know if he recognizes me because we have, he hasn't seen me in several weeks. But Ron, thank you for your understanding. I'd like to thank Nisim Rubin for all the help he's given us, to Brian Alexander, who helped us mobilize everyone at New Beginnings Church. to stand with us for being the wind beneath my wings. And there's a special person. Tonight was supposed to, I, we were supposed to have three honorees tonight. Uh, and one was supposed to be, I asked Cantor Store, and he had a concert that they were giving with 13 Cantors. Then he changed and he called me up, he said, we're all coming to the Stand With Us Gala and you just heard their beautiful music. Cantor's store has been, not only for this occasion, but amazingly helpful. I don't know how we could have done so many things without him. So Cantor's store, I would like you to come up just for a minute. Now I have to tell you, your wife told me you don't like surprises because you like to be in control of everything. But she gave me special permission, so if this is a surprise you don't want, take it up with her. Okay, this is a little token of our appreciation. It reads, I'm gonna move over here a little bit. It reads, Cantor Stephen Storr a spiritual leader who lifts and unites us through music, the speech of angels, October 29th, 2023. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them, but for me, anytime. Thank you. As many of you know, I'm a child of two Holocaust survivors. Some of you have met my mother of blessed memory. My parents endured unimaginable anguish and pain, but the worst of their nightmares were about the torment of children. Only when I was adult did my mother share a story which had haunted her for her entire life. It was shortly before she was sent to concentration camp. She was 14 years old, working for the Nazis uh, in, as a slave laborer in her city. She was hungry, but she found a little escape visiting her cousin, who had two little boys, two and five, little gingies, redheads. I don't know why, but there are a lot of redheads in my family. All my family in Israel has red hair. That's something. That's something else. But the mother of these boys was a cheerful young woman and she had a beautiful voice and she would walk around and sing melodies. So for my mother, it felt good to be in that environment. And one day she went to visit her cousin. Her cousin asked her if she would babysit just for a little while because she had a ration coupon and she wanted to get bread. Her cousin was gone only a few minutes when there was a crash. The front door was smashed down, and there stood men that looked like giants to a 14-year-old girl, wearing high, shiny boots. One of them grabbed the five-year-old, and my mother was holding on to the two-year-old, and they grabbed the baby from her, threw her against the across the room, against the wall. She fell down. And as fast as it started, it was over. In the meantime, the children's mother heard that the Nazis were hunting 
for toddlers. Every day they were hunting for someone else. So she ran home in desperation. She saw the door down, my mother crying on the floor, and nobody said a word. She knew what had happened. My mother left in tears, and her cousin went crazy, not figuratively, literally. She was sent to a mental hospital where she was murdered. I don't know her cousin's name or the children's name because my mother could never utter those words. On October 7th, I woke up, like most of us did, to the horrible news that Jewish men, women, and children were massacred. And then I saw an image of a woman holding two little boys, redheaded little boys, who had been ripped from their mother and thrown into a truck by Hamas. My parents had promised me never again. And yet here were Jewish babies being targeted, tortured, and brutalized again. All war is bad. All war has innocent victims. But the savagery and intentionality of attacking, burning, and decapitating babies, that's a special level of evil. As is the viciousness of those who are chanting to support the monsters. I was reeling. Is it 1943 again? The Nazis meticulously photographed their crimes, and Hamas boasts of their murders on social media. While Holocaust deniers waited until survivors were beginning to leave this earth, Hamas apologists are denying the atrocities even while little children are still being held in terrified captivity. We've seen the videos of young people on campuses ripping down posters with the photos of the kidnapped. The frenzied mobs of students at our most elite or most expensive colleges who are cheering Hamas, as did the mass mobs who idolized Hitler. At some universities, professors are dismissing classes so their students can join the protest which calls for the destruction of the only Jewish state. Most university administrators have not shown themselves to be profiles in courage. Is it 1943? Is there nothing left but despair? It would be easy to answer yet, yes, yet. Yet I say no, because now we have a Jewish state we have a refuge, we have an army, we can defend ourselves. I say no, because there are organizations like Stand With Us, which take action to defend Israel on the battlefronts, in the media, in communities, on campuses, in high schools, in middle schools. You know, no one at Stand With Us has slept a full night since October 7th. But I say no because we are all here in solidarity. Because we have allies, Christian, Hindu, and Muslim, who stand with us to assure us that never again is not just an expired slogan. <laughs>